good morning welcome to all so myself dr mahesh working as a assistant professor department of chemistry vardhaman college of engineering hyderabad so today i would like to explain engineering chemistry laboratory experiment so that is so estimation of amount of ferrous ion in given solution by permagnometry so the objective so the objective of this experiment is to determine normality and strength of given sample solution by using potassium permanganate so in this experiment so we require the operators so the required operators are conical flask so this is the standard volumetric flask beakers burette and pipette so these operators are required for this experiment so next chemicals requires so first one is the mohr salt solution so the formula of so the formula of mohr salt is ferrous sulfate ammonium sulfate six moles of water so this is the formula of mohr salt next potassium permanganate solution the formula of mohr salt is feso4 ammonium sulfate six moles of water so the formula of potassium permanganate is kmno4 so this is the formula of potassium permanganate and dilute sulfuric acid so there is a h2so4 so these chemicals are required for this experiment so next principle so here potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent in the presence of sulfuric acid and so the mohr salt it is act as a reducing agent so the reaction between mohr salt and potassium permanganate it is a redox redox reaction so in this redox reaction so the ferrous ion so the ferrous ion from mohr salt so it is oxidized to ferric ion and the pink color of potassium permanganate so in this potassium permanganate so manganese which is in the plus 7 oxidation state so it it can get reduced to colorless manganese plus 2 oxygen state so here potassium permanganate so it is act as a self indicators and so these titrations we are calling as a so permagnometric titrations so next chemical reaction so here potassium permanganate it is act as a strong oxidizing agent in the presence of sulfuric acid so the potassium permanganate so kmno4 so it is act as a strong oxidizing agent in the presence of sulfuric acid so it can form the potassium sulfate plus 2 moles of manganese sulfate plus so 3 moles of water so 5 moles of nascent oxygen so here mohr salt so the formula of mohr salt is feso4 ammonium sulfate 6 moles of water so this mohr salt it is act as a reducing agent so in this mohr salt so the ferrous ion is oxidized to ferric ion fe2so4 taken 3 plus so 2 moles of ammonium sulfate plus so 13 moles of water so now we have to observe here so here five nascent oxygen is there but here only one nascent oxygen is there so that's why so this whole reaction so we can multiply with the five so what is the overall net reaction so the overall net reaction he is so manganese potassium permanganate we are taking two moles so 10 moles of more salt solution so here three sulfuric acid here one into five five sulfuric acids so total how many so eight sulfuric acids so here five nascent oxygen so here one into five five nascent oxygen so both will be cancelled so next in the product so it can form the potassium sulfate so two moles of manganese sulfate so 5 moles of ferric sulfate plus 10 moles of ammonium sulfate plus so here 13 into 5 so 65 plus 3 so 68 moles of water molecule so this is the overall net reaction so we have to observe in this experiment so here potassium permanganate it is act as a strong oxidizing agent in the presence of the sulfuric acid and more salt it is act as a reducing agent so the more salt react with the potassium permanganate it is a redox reaction so in this redox reaction so the ferrous ion it can change uh, oxidized to ferric ion and the manganese plus 7 it can change it can change to the plus 2 and ferrous ion fe plus 2 it can change to the ferric ion so that is the plus 3 so this is overall net reaction uh, happened in this reaction so next procedure so in this experiment so we have the 
two steps. So first one is the standardization of potassium permanganate. So why we need to standardization of potassium permanganate? So why because potassium permanganate is a secondary standard solution. So what is the meaning of secondary standard solution? So secondary standard solution means so the substance which is not available in the pure form. The substance which is not available in the pure form. So that's we are calling the secondary standard solution. So here potassium permanganate is a secondary standard solution. So that's why we need to standardization of potassium permanganate by using titration method. Okay. So in this method, so first, first of all, so we have pipette out 10 ml of more salty, 0.1 normality of standard more salty A solution. So means we know the concentration of more salty A solution. So into the conical flask and so we should add the half test tube of so we should add the half test tube of the sulfuric acid. So what is the role of sulfuric acid? So it it can prevent the formation of manganese dioxide from manganese. So initially so we note down the initial reading in the burette before we have st uh, start the titrations. So now we start the titration. So the titration. So in the conical flask, so we have the so more salt A solution. So that is concentration is 0.5 and we should add the half test to sulfuric acid solution. So initially, so we have the more salt A. So what is the concentration of more salt A? So 0.1 normality. So this 0.1 normality of potash more salt A solution into the conical flask and we should add the half test tube of the sulfuric acid. So this colorless solution, so we are titrated against with the potassium permanganate which is present in the burette. So what happens? So initially, so the color of potassium permanganate is purple color. So when we are tight, uh, start the titration, what happens? So this purple color, so it can change to the colorless. So the purple color, purple color of potassium permanganate is discharged. So with the ferrous ammonium sulfate. So the appearance of the per, uh, permanent pink color, so it reveals and it can change to the so colorless. So that is the end point. So when we are observing the colorless, so the purple color solution, so it can change to the colorless solution. So that is the end point. So repeat the titration until we get the concrete values. So at least we are repeating the two times. So see here, so this is the purple color potassium permanganate solution. So this is the colorless more salt A solution. So including the sulfuric acid solution, by adding the sulfuric acid solution. So this colorless solution we are titrated against with the potassium permanganate solution. So what happens? So this colorless solution it can change to the pale pink color. So when we are observing the pale pink color in the conical flask, so we stop the titration and do note on the burette readings. So let's see here. So this is the initial. So whenever we are adding the one drop of the potassium permanganate solution, so we are observing the pale pink color solution in the col colorless solution. So whenever we are getting the pale pink color, so permanent pale pink color in the conical flask. So that is the end point or neutralization point. So we stop the titration and note down the burette readings. So this is the color of potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate solution. So we should draw the table. So in the first column, so pipette out uh, reading of more salt A solution. So generally we are taking that 10 ml of more salt A solution into the conical flask. So this 10 ml, uh, this solution we are adding the so sulfuric acid. So this colorless solution we are titrated against with the potassium permanganate. So when we are observing the pale pink color, so in the conical flask, so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading. So what is the initial reading of burette? So in generally the initial reading of burette is zero. So the final reading is 10 ml. So what is the difference? So 10 minus 0. So that is the 10. So repeat the titration until we get the concrete values. So so we re repeat uh, at least second time. So we are taking the 10 ml of more salt A solution to the conical flask. So we should follow the same procedure. So what is the initial reading? So now initial reading is 10 ml. So the final reading is so 20 ml. So what is the difference? 10 ml. So 20 minus 10, 10. So the concrete values. So 10 plus 10 by 2. So that is the also 10. So now we do the calculations. So here more salt A versus potassium permanganate solution. So N1 V1 is equal to N2 V2. Here N1 is equal to normality of more salt A solution. So that is the 0.1 normality and V1 is equal to so volume, volume of more salt A solution. So that is the 10 ml and V2 is equal to so normality of 
potassium permanganate solution so we should find it and v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so we should uh, v2 so we should get from the burette so see here so n1 is equal to normality of more salty solution so that is the 0 0.1 normality so they given and v1 is equal to volume of more salty solution so that is so we, we already we, we have take that 10 ml and n2 is equal to normality of potassium permanganate so we should find it and v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so we should get from the burette reading now we calculate the so n2 n2 is equal to so n1 v1 by v2 so now we substitute the all the values so n2 is equal to so what is the v1 so v1 is equal to normal of more salt here that is a 0.1 and v1 is equal to volume of more salt here that is a 10 ml by v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so that is a beer reading that is a 10 ml so both are kit cancel so this is a 0.1 normality so the normality of potassium permanganate is 0.1 normality now second step so that is the so determination of more salt a so determination of more salt b concentration so in the second step also so we should follow the same procedure so instead of more salt a so we should take the more salt b solution so we should take the 10 ml of more salt b solution into the conical flask and we should add the half test tube of the sulfuric acid so this colorless solution so we are titrate against with the potassium permanganate solution so which is present in the burette so whenever we are observing the pale pink color so in the conical flask so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading and we should draw the table so like this so volume of the given ferrous solution so that is a 10 ml so burette reading so initial reading is zero so and whenever we are observing the pale pink color so that is a 10 ml so what is the difference so 10 minus 0 10 and repeat the titration until we get the concrete values so we repeat second time so initial reading is 10 so the final reading is 20 so what is the difference so 20 minus 10 so 10 so the average value so 10 plus 10 so that is a 10 ml so now calculations so here potassium permanganate versus more salt b solution so we should find the concentration of more salt b by using the standard solution of more salt potassium permanganate so n2 v2 is equal to n3 v3 so here n2 is equal to normality of more potassium permanganate so we already done in the step one and v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so this v2 so we should get from the b rate and n3 is equal to normality of more salt b so we should find it so v3 is equal to volume of more salt b so that is the so 10 ml so n3 is equal to n2 v2 by v3 so now so we substitute all the values in this equation so n3 is equal to n2 so n2 is equal to normality of potassium permanganate solution so we are we are already done in the step one so that is a point one into so v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate we should get from the burette so that is the 10 ml by so v3 is equal to volume of more salt b so that is 10 so this both uh, 10 can get cancelled so normality of more salt b is equal to so point one so now so the final result is so the amount of ferrous ion present in the more salt b in given sample solution so n3 into equivalent weight of more uh, ferrous ion so what is the n3 so n3 is equal to normality of more salt b so that is n3 into equivalent weight of fe plus 2 ion so n3 is equal to 0 0.1 so we already find in the step 2 so equivalent what is the equivalent weight of ferrous ion the so there is a 56 so we should get the 5.6 grams per liter okay students so the final result is normality of given potassium permanganate solution is 0 0.1 normality of given more salt b solution 0.1 and the amount of ferrous ion in given sample solution is equal to 5.6 grams okay students so i conclude uh, in this topic so we are not just about the uh, providing quality education and we believe in the all round developments okay students thank you okay. good morning so welcome to all so myself dr mahesh so working as the assistant professor so department of chemistry so vardhaman college of engineering hyderabad today i would like to explain so the engineering chemistry laboratory experiment so that is the so estimation of amount of ferrous ion in given solution by permanganometer so the object objective is to determine the normality and strength of given sample solution by using 
potassium permanganate. So this is the main objective. Operators requires. So we requires the conical flask, standard volumetric flask, beakers, burette, pipette. So these operators. So we required for this experiment. గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సో వెల్కమ్ టు ఆల్ మై సెల్ఫ్ డాక్టర్ మహేష్ వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ కెమిస్ట్రీ సో వర్ధమాన్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ హైదరాబాద్ టుడే ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ సో ఇంజనీరింగ్ కెమిస్ట్రీ లాబొరేటరీ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ so that is the estimation of amount of ferrous ion in given solution by permanganate so objectives so the main objective is to determine the normality and strength of given sample solution by using potassium permanganate so operators requires so we requires the conical flask standard volumetric flask beakers and burette and pipette so these operators we require next chemicals requires so mohr salt solution so the form what is the formula of mohr salt solution so the formula of mohr salt is feso4 ammonium sulfate 6 moles of water so this is the formula of mohr salt so next one is the potassium permanganate so what is the formula of potassium permanganate so kmn4 and next one is the so dilute sulfuric acid so that is the h2so4 so next principle so here potassium permanganate it is act as a strong oxidizing agent in the presence of sulfuric acid and mohr salt a mohr salt is act as a reducing agent so the reaction between the mohr salt and potassium permanganate so it is a redox reaction so in this redox reaction so the ferrous ion so the ferrous ion from the mohr salt get oxidized to ferric ion and the pink color of potassium permanganate so the manganese which is present in the plus 7 oxidation state so it gets the reduced to colorless solution of manganese plus 2 state here potassium permanganate act as a self indicator and this titrations we are calling as a permanganatic titrations so next chemical reactions so the chemical reaction is here potassium permanganate so that is the so 2 moles of react with the so 3 moles of sulfuric acid so it can form the potassium sulfate plus 2 moles of manganese sulfate 3 moles of water and it can form the fine acid oxygen and more salt so the formula of more salt is fe so4 ammonium sulfate 6 moles of water so react with the 1 mole of sulfuric acid and 1 mole of nascent oxygen so it can form the ferric sulfate plus 2 moles of ammonium sulfate plus so 13 moles of water so what is the overall net reaction so here one nascent oxygen is there here five nascent oxygen is there so that's why so this whole reaction we can multiply with the five so this ఫైవ్ నేషన్ ఆక్సిజన్ అండ్ సో దీస్ ఫైవ్ నేషన్ ఆక్సిజన్ బోత్ ఆర్ గెట్ క్యాన్సర్ సో ద ఓవరాల్ నెట్ రియాక్షన్ ఈజ్ సో టూ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ పొటాషియం పర్మాంగనేట్ సో హియర్ టూ మోల్స్ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ మోర్ సాల్ట్ ఇంటూ ఫైవ్ టెన్ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ మోర్ సాల్ట్ సో హియర్ త్రీ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ సల్ఫరిక్ యాసిడ్ హియర్ వన్ ఇంటూ ఫైవ్ సో టోటల్ ఎయిట్ సల్ఫరిక్ యాసిడ్స్ అండ్ పొటాషియం సల్ఫేట్ సో టూ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాంగ్నీస్ సల్ఫేట్ అండ్ ఫెరిక్ యాస్ ఫెరిక్ సల్ఫేట్ టూ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ అమోనియం సల్ఫేట్ ప్లస్ సిక్స్టీ ఎయిట్ మోల్స్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఓవరాల్ నెట్ రియాక్షన్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ సో హియర్ మ్యాంగ్నీస్ ప్లస్ సెవెన్ సో ఇట్ కెన్ రెడ్యూస్ టు ద మ్యాంగ్నీస్ ప్లస్ టూ సో ఎఫ్ఇ ప్లస్ టూ సో ఆక్సిడైజ్ టు ఎఫ్ఇ ప్లస్ త్రీ ఇవి టూ టూ మోల్స్ అవి టెన్ ఫైవ్ ఫైవ్ ఫెరిక్ ఫైవ్ so now procedure so in this experiment we have the two steps so first one first step is the standardization of potassium permanganate so why we need to standardization of potassium permanganate so because potassium permanganate is the secondary standard solution so what is the meaning of secondary standard solution so secondary stand, standard solution means the substance which is not available in the pure form so that is the secondary standard solution so that's why we need to the standardization by using the titration method so in this method so we prepared the 10 ml of 0.1 normality of మోర్ సాల్ట్ ఏ సొల్యూషన్ ఇట్ ద కొనికల్ ఫ్లాస్క్ యాడ్ ఆఫ్ టేస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద సల్ఫరిక్ యాసిడ్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద రోల్ ఆఫ్ సల్ఫరిక్ యాసిడ్ సో ఇట్ ప్రివెంట్ ద ఆక్సిడేషన్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాగ్నెస్ టు మ్యాగ్నెస్ డైఆక్సైడ్ సో దీస్ కలర్లెస్ సొల్యూషన్ సో వీఆర్ టైటెడ్ ఎగ్నెస్ట్ విత్ ద పొటాషియం పర్మాగ్నేట్ విచ్ ఈస్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ ద ప్యూరేట్ సో వాట్ అపెన్స్ సో ద కలర్లెస్ సొల్యూషన్ సో ఇట్ కెన్ చేంజెస్ టు ద pale pink color so whenever we are observing the pale pink color so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading so initial reading so so this is the 
color of potassium permanganate is purple color so this is the colorless fes solution so this colorless solution titrate against with the potassium permanganate purple color potassium permanganate so when we are observing the pale pink color in the conical flask so we stop the titration and note on the mirror reading so see here so first so we observe the so light pale pink color so whenever we are observing the permanent pale pink color so we stop the titration and note down the mirror reading so this is the solution of potassium permanganate so we should draw the table so like this so we pipette out 10 ml of more salt a solution so we know the concentration so into the pip, uh, this 10 ml of more salt a solution into the conical flask so initial reading of burette is zero so whenever we are observing the pale pink color so that is the final reading of burette so that is the 10 ml so difference so 10 minus 0 10 ml so repeat the titration until we get the concurrent values so at least so we re repeat the two times so repeat the second time so 10 ml of more salt a solution into the conical flask so we should this colorless solution titrate against with the potassium permanganate so initial reading of burette is 10 ml so whenever we are observing the pale pink color in the conical flask so that is the final reading of burette so 20 ml so the difference is so 20 minus 10 10 so the average values so 10 plus 10 by 2 so that is a 10 ml so now calculation so more salt a versus potassium permanganate so here n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 so here n1 is equal to normality of more salt a solution and v1 is equal to volume of more salt a solution and n2 is equal to normality of potassium permanganate so that is so we should find it so v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate solution so that is a burette reading so this is the normality of more salt a solution so that is the 0.1 normality so volume of more salt a solution so then we are taking the 10 ml of more salt a solution so normality of potassium permanganate so we should find it so volume of potassium permanganate that is a burette reading so n2 is equal to n1 v1 by v2 now so we substitute all the, all the values in this equation so n2 is equal to so what is the n1 so n1 is equal to normality of more salt a so that is the 0.1 into v1 is equal to volume of more salt a so that is the 10 ml why so v1 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so that is a burette reading so that is the average volume of burette reading so that is the 10 ml so this both are get cancel so n2 is equal to so 0.1 normality so n2 is equal to 0.1 normality so n2 is equal to normality of more salt a sorry normality of potassium permanganate so that is a point one so now uh, step two is the so determination of more salt a more salt b concentration so we should follow the same procedure so that is so we pip it out the 10 ml of more salt b solution so this more salt b means we don't know the concentration so we pip it out 10 ml of more salt b solution into the conical flask and we should add the after tube of the sulfuric acid so this colorless same uh, we should follow the same procedure so the this colorless solution we are titrated against with the potassium permanganate which is present in the purit so when we are observing the pale pink color in the conical flask so that is the in, that is indicate the end point or neutralization point so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading so we should draw the table so like this so the volume of uh, ferrous solution is we are taking the 10 ml so initial reading of burette is zero so whenever we are observing the pale pink color so that is the end point so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading so that is a 5 ml so what is the difference so 5 minus 0 5 so repeat the titration until we get the concrete values so we should repeat the second time same 10 ml of more salt b solution into the conical flask and we should add the half test tube of sulfuric acid solution this colorless solution we are titrated against with the potassium permanganate which is present in the burette so initial reading of burette is 5 ml so whenever we are observing the pale pink color in the conical flask so we stop the titration and note down the burette reading so that is the burette final reading so 10 ml so the difference is 5 so the mean burette reading is 5 plus 5 by 2 so that is the 5 so now calculations potassium permanganate versus more salt b so here n2 v2 is equal to n3 v3 so n2 is equal to normality of potassium permanganate so we already find in the step one so v2 is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so that is the b rate reading so v3 is equal to normality of more salt b so we should find it and v3 is equal to volume of more salt b 
so that is a 10 ml so nt is equal to normality of potassium permanganate so we already find in the step one so that is the point one normality and vt is equal to volume of potassium permanganate so that is a period average reading n3 is equal to normality of more salt b solution so we should find it so we should find the normality of more salt b so volume of more salt b is, is equal to so we are taking the 10 ml of more salt b solution in the conical flask so that is the v3 so n3 is equal to n2 v2 by v3 so now we substitute all the values in this equation so n3 is equal to so n2 is equal to what is n2 so that is the normality of potassium permanganate 0.1 so v2 is equal to so volume of potassium permanganate so that is the average value of birate reading so that is the 5 by so v2 is equal to volume of more salt b solution so that is a 10 ml so 5 ones are 5 twos so n3 is equal to 0. Point, so 0 0.05 normality so this is the normality of more salt b solution so the normality of more salt b is so 0 0.05 normality and the, so amount of ferrous ion present in given sample solution is equal to so normality into equivalent weight of more salt ion so that is the so normality of more F, ferrous fasb so that is the 0.05 into what is the equivalent weight of ferrous ion so that is the 56 so 0 0.05 we can multiply with the 56 so we should get the so 2.2.8 grams per liter so this is the final result okay so final result is so what is the normality of potassium permanganate solution is so it is a 0.1 normality so we already find in the step one so what is the normality of uh, more salt b solution so we find in the step two 0 0.05 so the amount of ferrous ion in given sample solution is so what is the amount so 2.8 grams of 2.8 grams 2.8 grams per grams per liter so this is the final result final results so now so uh, i conclude my section section okay thank you